Good afternoon from a very blustery Wednesday afternoon. It's the 5th of October 2022 and uh, this episode will bring us up to June so we're nearly up to date. Um, this week we've been busily working away to get everything ready to step Josephine's masts so that's something to look forward to in an upcoming video hopefully quite soon. Um, but before I show you this video I'd just like to make a couple of thank yous. Um, first of all to Roger from Falmouth who took pity on me when he saw me kneeling on the concrete floor of the dry dock I think and out of the blue I received a package from him of a couple of really nice uh, knee pads. These in fact knee pads. So uh, thank you very much Roger. They've been put to great use already and much appreciated. Um, secondly to Robert who lives locally and overlooks the docks and has been uh, enjoying watching the rebuild of Josephine over the last uh, uh, 18 months, two years. So much so that he had a painting commissioned uh, of uh, Josephine and in an incredible act of kindness made us a copy and had it framed. Uh, and gave it to us the other day. So uh, I don't know whether you'll be able to see this because there's quite a lot of reflections around here. But um, this is the this is the painting, uh, a lovely watercolour. That's Josephine covered up next to the Kathleen and May, or just alongside the Kathleen and May. So thank you very much indeed, Robert. That's beautiful. That's lovely. Absolutely lovely. So thank you to both of you. And also thank you to everybody who's popped in to say hello and to see us during the course of the last few weeks. We've actually had quite a lot of visitors, uh, including one all the way from Illinois in the US. So uh, thank you, Steve, and uh, I hope you enjoyed your visit. Steve came all the way from Illinois, um, and as an added bonus, he was able to pop in and see some family who happened to live in Gloucester. So uh, thank you very much indeed to everybody, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm just doing the final corking on the starboard side of the boat. Still got the stern to do, uh, I've spoken about that before. Small section of the stern to do, we can't do that until that's all. I can't cork it until it's sort of the rebuild's finished. But the rest of the hull we can. I've finished the uh, port side. Working on the starboard side, you can see that. You can see all the seams have been paid. That's why they're all bright red so they've got putty in them. So it's all done up to here and I've just got these last few seams here to do. 
Uh, this is a new bolt of uh, oakum and the trick is and I've just did this just a minute ago is to find the end and this one was easy came out nicely because you take it from the center you feed it from the center obviously not the outside so uh, that's a nice lovely fresh smelling bolt of oakum which I'm about to start with so I just You'll notice, by the way, that uh, my irons have got bits of string on them. That's because working from the pontoon, if I were to drop one, it's, uh, there's a very good chance it would end up disappearing into the lock, <coughs> into the dock, I should say, and um, it'll just disappear in the mud. And although I've got a magnet for picking up stuff, it's hit and miss whether you ever find it again. Uh, so that's hence the string. I did that yesterday so it's all been corked and then paid all the way along and this morning actually I did the horse holes for the Panama cleats uh, fitted those there's two of them so I've got that in already this morning um, and I've just got a couple of seams here to do you can see um, those have been done those bottom three and I've got to do these four seams I just started one there look forcing it in as we do this taking off the excess but also making sure that the putty is forced well into the to the seam this is where if it's if it's a little bit dry it goes flaky which is not what you want you don't want it too wet either because you want it to dry as soon as possible so that you can paint it as soon as possible to protect everything. It's always a funny thing actually, you know, I've learned doing this. The All the ideals sort of go out the window a little bit. Uh, you know, the practicalities are you can't sort of wait two weeks for everything to dry. You know, you're in dry dock for instance doing the job. Uh, you can't just sort of sit there and take up dry dock time while you wait for everything to dry. So you, there is a bit of compromise, you know, you really do paint on top of things that you wouldn't ordinary. But on the other hand, the materials we're using, which are designed for boats, help. I mean, this vinegar paint, the grey stuff that you're looking at now, you know, the primer, you can paint in down to three degrees and it dries ever so quickly. You know, within half an hour it's touch dry, three hours you can uh, recoat it. So. You know, you've got materials that help. So, uh, 
that. It's actually snowing, would you believe it? I told you it was cold. It's that sort of a day. Good morning. It's uh, 1st of April 2022. It is uh, 9 o'clock. We're a bit slow getting going this morning because it's absolutely freezing. I think minus 1 or minus 2 this morning, minus 3 tomorrow. And we're in the sort of middle of a lots of painting and bits. Randy has continued on with uh, the water boards. You can see there the oak plank on the outside I'm referring to. Um, the deck itself doesn't get treated, but the oak plank on the outside is going to be varnished. She dewanded it last night. You can see the difference she's got. You can see where she's got up to. Uh, this line here is pretty obvious. She's got that last little bit to do. That used to be, of course, pristine. It's brand new wood and beautiful oak. It was. It looked gorgeous when it went in. But that was a couple of months ago, and since then we've been in dry dock. It needs to be treated because the oak is not as robust as the ordinary softwood pine of the deck um, you know it's uh, it needs protection basically it can't survive all on its own without a bit of protection so it's going to be varnished uh, so Randy's on to that you see how lovely it looks there uh, it des desperately needs protecting but now we've finished the all the dirty horrible jobs uh, hopefully it'll stay nice which is why she's doing it cabin rail's got to be painted and uh, my job today is drilling the new holes for the chain plates that are over there. So, here's the issue. I've got these three chain plates to bolt onto the hull, and I have, uh, they, they go here. Because we've replaced all of these planks, the uh, where the holes were have now disappeared with the old planks that we threw out, of course. Whilst there's no holes on the outside of the hull, <clears throat> there are still holes on the inside, right? Just because the bolts go through the hull plank and then they go through either frames or stanchions. They're not just held on by the, the hull plank itself. If they go through the frames, we've still got the reference hole on the inside and we're able to use that. Um, but some of them we can't. Some of them, I think, this one goes through the stanchion and we change the, st and we change the stanchion. Uh, so we do have some reference on the inside. So the point is, all I've got is those two holes as references. Um, I'm going to drill through that one now just to show you what I... Uh, demonstrate what I've just been talking about. Uh, and then somehow I've got to figure out how to drill the others and that's what my job is this morning. Because where this one is, if I put the chain plate in now at that position, it actually, unless I put it at a ridiculously raked angle, it is actually going to miss the frame. So I'm not quite sure what went on there, but this is an opportunity to put it right uh, because we're sort of starting afresh. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drill through this hole and then you'll see what I mean on the inside. I need to go and check it anyway, so let's have a go at that first. Uh, I do have another reference that I can check actually for getting this right. And uh, that's photographs. When we took the boat apart, we took lots of pictures and they've been very useful actually as references. So it's a tip to anyone doing this job, just take loads and loads of photographs of everything, even if you don't think it's particularly interesting or important because it's, uh, it will become so probably in the future. Anyway, so I've just looked at the photographs I've got of the chain plates. This is the port side. And you can see that there is a, a nice uh, division, a nice spread of those chain plates. The first one's more or less in line with the mast, which I understand it should be. And then the other two are slightly leaning forward, uh, obviously to sort of mimic to a large degree the actual shrouds. So if we just go over now to the starboard side and I enlarge that a little bit, you can see that the, the first one, the first chain plate, like the other side, is more or less in line with the mat, so that's good, that can stay like that. Second one is leaning forward very slightly, probably a little bit more than the other side, but good, there's nothing wrong with that. But you can see the issue here with this uh, aft chain plate, it's very close to the middle one, so the distance between there is suddenly smaller, and it's very upright. And maybe that's what the issue is, now that the stanchion's further aft, we can actually put the chain plate further aft. Either way, I'm going to do as much as I can to get that chain plate further aft. So it's going to be a little bit of making it up as I go along on that. <laughs> Makes life a bit easier. I'm going to have to somehow 
Let me get Randy to hold it on the outside. It's difficult because there's no castellated uh, heads on those bolts. Sometimes you can scare them into it using a impact driver like this. We'll see. You see, by spinning it fast, you can often get it to uh, the nut to rotate. And then finally, this one is going to go somewhere in here. as you can see don't go right through because they've got a square section around the head of the of the bolt there which locks in when it's driven into wood which is what made for I've got to take that off so that it sits into the chain plate which is what I'm going to do now See that the chain plate holes are very nicely countersunk, so I don't have to take all the meat off uh, these. I can leave them. I'll hold it up that way. I can leave a, a taper in here, which is good, so I can leave more material on. Uh, let's just see if it fits. Uh, it fits lovely. Look, so it's perfect. It's the top one. flash on there because the disadvantage uh, with this job doing this is that you're taking off the galvanizing so I'll spray that I'll spray some cold what they call cold galvanizing spray around the uh, around the heads in the star means starboard and the five means the fifth stanchion. So on this one, you see a star for starboard, and then a six, a V and a one, six, and on that one, a seven. Okay, so that's how, that's how they were marked. That's how we know where they go back. And we mark the stanchions in a similar way. It's a useful tip actually, because it's so easy to do with a grinder, yeah? with a cutting disc on it. Uh, there you go. I can cut that now. Sit in there. A little screw will just hold it into the into the uh, capping rail. All done. I'll just go and put some nuts on the inside of that just to stop them falling out while I'm working on other things. You can see that this one's finished and bedded in on red lead putty. And this is the one I've just put in and bolted down. And you can see how the putty gets uh, pressed out. So it's a nice bed for the uh, chain plates. Enough. 